Hello and welcome back to Anvil Plays. So, it's time to start questioning this guy. The old priest nods politely. Is there something else I can help you with? Uh, people in town say the Hollow Hollowborn problem has been especially bad here. It has. Cities and villages all over Durwood has have seen Hollowborn, but Durford hasn't seen the birth of an unaffected child in years. Most of our people have moved on to other villages in search of hope, and those who have stayed behind aren't the same. Children promise a future, you know. People change when you take that away from them. What happened to you? I never saw their faces. Strange hooded men asking about those ruins. Cleoban Rilag. Most of the brigands who come through here asking about the ruins are looking for a few ancient trinkets. But these people knew the name, and they were in a hurry. They wanted to know where Cleoban Relog was. I tried to That's keep it probably going. the leaden key. I couldn't hold out forever. It's I don't know. Probably the leaden to, key. But it can't be good. Mm. Can you tell me where to find the ruins? The Glanfarthen tribe that guards the ruins will kill anyone who trespasses there. And they'll retaliate against us too, if history is any indication. We've had too many fortune seekers stir up trouble of late. If I'm to tell you, I'll need to know your reason for wanting to go. A dangerous plot is unfolding there. I've got to stop it. If that's the case, we may already have trouble headed our way. I'll have to take you at your word. You'll find Cleoban Relog here. Whatever trouble you find there, please end it quietly and try to stay out of the ruins. This is Temple of Barath. What can you tell me about Barath? Barath is the most universal of all gods. It oversees portals and Cycles of all kinds and even life and death itself. Under Baraf, an ending is merely a passage to another beginning. Baraf has, has many representations across time and other cross cultures. Around the Durwood, you'll commonly see it depicted as a pallid knight of the Osher. The Glanfathans, however, know it as Bevnan I I Ankiv and Ankivi Bevan. Who is the Osher? Kiv have written stories, songs, and poems about the Osher for centuries. Sometimes he's folk, sometimes he's dwarf, and sometimes merely a walking skeleton. He never speaks, but he guides the way to death and the next life. He also creates the circumstance for the wayward to to stumble into their own graves. I've never heard of Bevenin Yakiv and Ankiv Bevenin. It means life and death and death and life, respectively. You see them as two skelet skeletal figures, one male and one female. Explorers have found them carved up as opposite one another in doorways, but I know of no particular legends that speak of them. Tell me about the Pallet Knight. She's the youngest manifestations, youngest of the manifestations of Baraf, but a familiar one nonetheless. Stories describes her as a gaunt knight in black armor with black eyes, black hair, and milk pale skin. She demands an impossible toll from travelers who have tarried too long on her lord's road. Some challenge her only to slay themselves in the process. Waiting for the information. Of course, Baraf has, was once more widely worshipped in this area, but in, in <laughs> but it is a silent god. These days, people find themselves in need of clearer answers. Think about Durford. People here tend to take to keep to themselves, as they do in most towns deep in the Durwood. They're suspicious of travellers, but with all the brigands and refugees moving through the area, who can blame them? Yes, that's true. All right then. And all the newcomers promise to promised good land here by uh, by the lord local lords I lost money to bandits again shit I really gotta am I building something at the moment finish in 24 okay maybe I should make those walls already <laughs> Make make them uh, hmm. a 
this chair is not the most comfortable thing in the world, I have to tell you. It's like a dining table chair I had to use because my other chair broke. <laughs> How's the hand? Turning purple. I'd have to cut it off. I warned you not to pet him. If I'm not supposed to pet him, why is he so soft? <laughs> That's how I feel about dogs, too, man. Following your lead. Hey. She seems to be better. Good. Good shit. No, no, none of them have anything to say, so let's guess that's... Oh! Okay. Guess we have to go to the crossing first. Which makes sense, I guess it, it would make sense, but since I know where it is on the map, can I just like quick travel through the crossing? I already emptied the crossing of enemies a while ago, but eh. <laughs> Maybe I'll run into new enemies, we'll see. This is deer. Cleveland Rirak. That's one of the story missions, isn't it? I haven't been good with keeping up with the story missions. Um, because there's just so much to do in this game. It's a very busy game. It's, it's very like... Oh, then there's this and this and this and this and this and this and this. I'm gonna hard save here. Um, just because. Clear bar. Isn't it? Clear bar relax. Hard save. Good. Hard save. Mm. Okay. The man stands before you, his face smeared with green and ochre dyes. Highs and first covers body and he holds his spear in one hand. What brings you here? Back to your village, Estramor. You are lucky the free Tusk Stelgear hunt the quarry today. What do you know about Kirvan Rilak? It is a sacred place of the builders, and neither your feet nor ours shall sully its stones. The grasses, however, I will gladly water with your blood. Free Tusk Stelgear? Have the farmers grown too fearful to even mention our name? We are the fiercest of the six tribes of Veer Clamfer, and we are the guardians of the monument here. Never heard of the builders. They are known by other names in the heathen tongues of farm folk. They are the ancients who built this place and what many more like it. And we of the six tribes guard their legacy. I'm looking for a group of people who may have already entered the ruin. So are we. That is why we wait here, Esther Moore. That is why I have decided to let you leave in peace. These individuals are my enemies too. If you let me in, I could break them out for you. And allow in more Istrum. Mourn to trample sacred ground? Certainly not. Well, you already messed up once. What the harms of doing it again on our account, seeing as how you're probably much nicer people? What will you do? We will wait. If they are inside, they must come out. And when they do... Uh, I see. Good. I go where I wish. Stand aside. Take another step. The groats will feast on your entrails. We have no crawl. Turn away or we will. The defilers never listen. Okay. Sorry about this. Red button. <laughs> Hunter, warrior. Yeah, put that there. Let's 
Ixi. <laughs> you should arrive. Ixi. Ah, no. Shed no blood. Hey, you're not getting through me. Good shit. Of course. Nothing will slip past me. All right. Slowly make our way in here. Bunin Iyankyu and Ankyu Ibunin. Life in death and death in life. Magnificent. Let's see if there's a, a another way in. Maybe I can like use my grappling hook. Let's see, there's a path over here. Maybe I should have attacked those guys. They weren't really that bad. They were just doing their religious thing over there. This is our camp, I'm guessing. No. Oh. What do we got here? A broken bridge lies before you. Most of it appears to be crumbled in the river centuries ago, leaving two jacked ledges on the other side of the water. You see a yawning passage into the mountain on the other side. You might be able to jump across the gap. Gonna quick save here. And then, if any of them die... Grieving mother misjudges the gap and barely makes it across, braining a wrist in the process. Okay. See, that's what I thought would happen. But, you know, we just got a free bet roll, so... I'm gonna... Gonna take that up as a win. As your party grows in size, you may want to change the formation. You can use the formation button on the main hub to cycle between pre-built formations or build your own. I really should be reading these fucking loading screen prompts more, but... Okay. Another hard save. Another hard save. Um... I should have bought, like, I really thought I had more grappling hooks, but apparently not. So I guess that's that. I'm on the trail. Yeah, let's go. What is that? Can I go down this way? No, that's a bridge of some sort. Oh, there's a thing here. There's a troller. It's a tro a troller. It's a wilder. It's a troll. Okay. Let's see. I like that ability. That's a really good ability. Um. I'm gonna save this one for a little bit. Maybe I can like raise some minds of toxins in the area of effect, causing them to believe they're surrounded by phantom foes, leaving them flanked for the duration. Following your lead. You're not getting through me. Hey. Good shit. Slow and silent. You're not 
getting through me. Kill that fucking dude. You're not getting. You fucking kill that dude. Come on. Yes. Please. Fucking ooze. Actually, can I like. Who was it that didn't have that good weapons? It was a uh, grieving mother, wasn't it? I wonder if she is. Is she at all good at enchant? Can I? Is she at all good at um? What they don't want to say. Um. Two-handing, dual wielding. I wonder if she is. I could teach her. But I'd have to charge. Hmm. Gotta give her some wilder thing because it seems like we're going to be facing a lot of wilders. I'm gonna see if she could do it with two. I don't think she can, but might as well try it. Eh. I can give her the ability in a later leveling, I think. I think it's a basic leveling thing you can give them to be able to wield different types of weapons, which is something I miss. In so many RPGs, like my first RPG I bothered to finish was Origins, and in Origins you could give everybody anything you wanted, like Morrigan coming at you with a fucking sword, that's good shit. I wonder why like all other RPGs like cannot comprehend the idea of a mage learning how to use a sword or a... a warrior learning how to use the staff as a bow staff like fucking even world of warcraft got that right at least in the beginning like later on they changed it but in the beginning you could get like weapon skills with all the different sorts of characters and and that was really cool to me that was something i spent a lot of time on actually i i had this uh i was on an rpg server and i had this troll that i wanted to be the best warrior at all weapons so i got all sorts of weapons and i just spent time it was boring shit but i spent time leveling him in all weapons and in later expansion packs they sort of just removed that and that was really boring and annoying like laying low that was just that was a cool system to me and i'm I, i'm sad that they removed it really because that that was that's this <laughs> I I I fall in love with the weirdest mechanics, but uh, yeah. Because I also felt more like this was my guy, right? Because I'm sorry, I'm, I'm I'm I have a hard time letting this go. It felt more it was my, like it was my original build. Like in later Dragon Age things, like of course you're gonna get the staff of 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 power because it's the best mage staff why would you give them anything else like and 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 this build is good for this character and this build is good for this character no let me experiment let me have fun with it it's a lot of rpgs don't really let you have fun with that shit for some reason if any of you guys are game designers put that in mind if you have the resources for it consider doing that Okay, I'm gonna let it go now, because we're here for video games. Okay, let's see. Puppet Master destroys the target's psychic defenses, leaving them dominated by the cipher for the duration. Okay. Now that is interesting. Let's see if we can... There's a lesson to be taught. Death to our enemies. This isn't going very well. What? Yeah, move. There's a lesson to be taught. Following your lead. Stand still. Hey. Leave it to me. Yeah. 
Why can't she use her abilities? I wish you no harm. I have them. Shed no blood. What? Kind of stuck over here. Leave it to me. Don't even. Come on, kill it. Leave it to me. You're not good. Push the second hand. Try to enter your stun to tackle the attack dealing wall damage to all enemies within. Stands a high chance of causing an interrupt. Keep that in mind. Okay. Good shit. I almost want to rest, but hmm. your mind comes bearing questions. What? Want to peer into your memories again? Vision gives way to waves of feeling while you check marks of violence you passed before. This time the path is easier. There's no resistance, so you sit about casually harnessing her memories, focusing on the one you seek. There's a slow rush at one. And suddenly you are calm, you're on a plateau, almost the height of a tower, several stories high. The plateau is like a table lying beneath a clear sky, and beneath the plateau, surrounding it in all directions, a forest, hazy with mist. Okay. And what did you see in my memories? I would hear you speak of them. There's the silence there. Okay. She was breath scream all false as if her strength were caught. Tell me what you saw. Show me what you saw. Where were you? We're in the middle of a clear forest with a strong wind. A huge forest stretching out beneath a great rock? The stone of the plateau. Its color. Tell me its color. Uh, I believe it was Scylla Adra. As she watches her hands rise before her, she clasps them, then cups them as if feeling for the first time as she stares down the cradle of her hands. And what did these hands hold? Um. The same chimes you hold now. Tell me what you okay, saw. Okay, let's see. The stone of the plateau. Adra. And what did these hands hold? They held a woman, a mother, while she gave birth, painfully. But her eyes are closed, a film building on them. With a slow intake of breath, you feel time become quiet up around you. Okay. Tell me what you saw. Show okay. The stone of the Silver plateau. Silver Adra. And what did these hands... There was a child. There was a sudden tick of breath and then a release. Her eyes blurred, closed, forming into slits. But in the brief glimpse you have of her changing expression, the rippling pain in her features seemed to have smoothed. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about skipping through this so quickly. She swallows once, twice, and then you feel her once again in your thoughts. The rasping husk of her voice swallow and draw over the her. It was the birthing bell you saw. Has it been so long? forgotten so much with the words come a river of impulses thoughts of if loosed from a breaking dam and your mind wraps the impulses around into words you realize it is her muscles and her heart and thoughts relaxing and breathing again there's such an intensity you almost want to step back from the flow but you find a wave of impulses cause questions to float the surface among them is the name watcher what is the birthing bell? It is a plateau formed of the spirit stone Audra. At its top is set a great bell cradled in the reaching arm of the plateau. It stirs in the wind and it sounds for leagues when struck by Kith hands. Mm. In distant times, the great bell served as a Glanfothan watchtower, perhaps. Why they abandoned it, I do not know. Other men came in time, settlers, and claim the tower as their own. 
I, in turn, claimed it from them. The pillar became a cradle where I could draw new souls into the world. Where is the birthing bell located? The birthing bell lies deep in the great forest of Durwood at the borders of the Lanfathan land surrounding it. Barely a town, no one you would find on any map, but it held an important place for those there, even if you were far from the beaten track. Small families, tied like a knot, joined at the wrist and mine in fort. All were welcome, all had purpose. In your memory, were you helping a woman give birth? Yes. Yet, I believe you only saw a small part of the birthing ritual. It is not all in a moment, nor in a day. It is a journey of many years between the child, the mother, and I. There was much I could do to aid the mother. Some sought the physical comforts of ritual to steady their thoughts, even Adra from the bell. Others would seek advice, word of counsel for the days ahead. I was able to provide draughts, tinctures, and a reading of the child's spirits, all to strengthen the mother. Tell me about the birthing ritual? The ritual was one of many steps. It took many tens of years to carve them, but always. The child's thoughts were there to guide me from the moment it began to awaken to the three seasons within the mother to the birthing day and the years to follow the child's thoughts that is where it began hmm the expectant mother I could often sense her thoughts and those of her child before she could I would soothe her free her from the panic of questions I would sound the memory of the birthing bell atop the plateau in her mind, letting the memory of the vibrations fill my thoughts and hers. Often, the child's soul could hear it too, so the sound of the bell echoed in the mother's thoughts. You sense the mother's thoughts? Share memories and thoughts can, bo can bond lives together, as can hardships, and most of all, the sharing of what is familiar. The bell itself provided shelter for such thoughts, opportunities to see deep into the crevice, hollows and rock where one could find shelter, clefts where you could feel the Adra all around you. As she, sp as she speaks, you feel your legs bent across to the warmth of walls around you and blankets woven thick beneath you. Such shared images can bond souls even tighter and allow them to draw strength from each other. You mentioned the ritual lasted years. What would happen after the birth? Once the pain is channeled away and the mother and child breathe again, I sound the birthing bells on my wrists and allow the mother to hear the child's thoughts, the ringing echoing each in each other's thoughts. The bells open the way between them, let her feelings pass into the newborn and let her child, let her feel the child in return. And when the feelings meet, that is when I weave another memory and leave it tied in their minds. These bells play an important role in the birthing process. Yes, and for years after I gave a set to the child of delivery, as a reminder of the memory of the mother and child shared. You feel an odd sensation of warmth and you can feel a smile being shared. Then it flickers and it's gone. As the bells coax the child forth, so they accompany the child uh, onwards, fastened by the wrist, to care for him in mind and body. There's no magic in it except the magic of practicality. If a child sought to leave their cradles or escape their cribs, the mother could know through the warning of the chimes alone. At times, if the bond was strong, so would I. If not watched, children, much trouble may be had from tiny hands. The chimes are kept until the child ke needs them no longer. When I no longer can hear them sounding in my mind, I know their spirit has changed, and the bonds we shared are long gone. Just shedding may last many years, or, bo or but a few, but it is necessary. You watched over these children for years after their births? Children are fragile things. Even the size of blood and mind may not be enough, they must be watched and even. Even then, the body may fail the mind. But if watched, even the most sickly child may cling to life if determined enough, and many of their souls were tied to me. If a child's spirit failed, I could sound the chimes in a mind and grant them strength, even from afar. It, it did not always serve, but it gave hope. Sounds like you've seen strategy too. Enough to never wish to feel it again. And then times before the bell, children who died were cast upon the waters of the lake beyond the bell. 
Sometimes while alive, if their paths and futures were deemed weak. It was a different time. Children were treated carelessly. Those times... Those times are past. Had a little question about the birthing bell. Ask what you will or provide what answers you I can. Why would you give a teller of child's spirit? Many would come seeking their child's future. Or a reading into the child's past. The lives its soul is said to have lived. There's a slow chilling for a moment. It seems as if she's going to fade from your vision. As, as if she can't bear to be seen. Or there is a spike of fear. Alarm. Such things are not mine to see. I meant no offense. Oddly enough, it feels like she's not speaking to you. It feels like she's speaking to an audience. The air takes on a curious edge, a chill which persists for a short moment, then fades to dull fear. You feel the word watcher resounding in her mind. You're frightened. Something about watchers? As the thought of watchers crosses your mind, you feel a sharp pain, stabbing and the sudden burn of lashes to your back, shoulder, and then it is gone, and you feel the grieving mother before you, silent. Almost fearful, very. I was something else, but because the title Watcher was cast on me, the word carried a weight I had neither earned nor deserved. The world seems filled with such titles. They distract, I think, from the actions of the person, from their strengths. Why did you believe you were a Watcher? The world has many corners, and in some corners the name Watcher is more known. It is an easier title than others, and at times it is easier to wear. Placing a title upon what is unknown can dispel the fear of it, and I did not fight it. I even believed it true, though I knew little of the ways of Watchers. It even granted me strength. I was able to see the thoughts of others, shape them, and help guide souls. Watcher seemed enough. And the name seemed to matter little in the light of one's acts. But if they came to you to read their child's souls, what did you tell them? I drew upon the present. I felt the soul of the mother before me, and used that to tell the child's path, to give it a voice. Only the thoughts of the mother and the emotions that lie beneath were mine to impart. I did, and so I used that as the telling of their child's future. What if the mother's emotions were painful, hurtful? One must guard oneself when drawing upon the thoughts of another. The pain of a mother's rage and disdain. It can be a powerful poison. So you shaped their thoughts, made the readings true. This is my calling. To show them the life I see before them. And even greater, make them believe it. So you... Tr So you twisted the mother's feeling for their children. Even the most strongly worded tells may not be enough to save a child and allow it to be born. If I have the strength to strip away the stem of a mother's spite to expose kindness, weave nurturing from disdain and neglect, then that is my calling. And with the weight of Watcher behind my thoughts, these tells gain strength. Strength I never possessed on my own. They believed. And what they believed became the truth. With each child that was set upon that path, the title of Watcher became stronger. You must understand, without such weight upon my words, many lives would have been lost, drowned, cast in the lake beyond the bell. Now the trail to the lake is lost and reclaimed by the forest, as was meant. A Watcher was not there to look over us, but it was a Watcher that saved them. And with a Watcher's strength, children were born, were cared for, and grew strong. Seems your readings were necessary. What use is a frightened will when a spirit is at stake? Would you let the fears of a mother end her newborn's life? You felt it in the memory, the weight of it, the importance of the child's life. It was a memory we shared. Interesting. I mean, I know, sorry, I know we're over time, sorry. But that is... So, the question is... You live in a city. 
where if a child doesn't seem like it has the strength to um to to survive the winter for example let's say let's say it's a poorly child maybe it was born a little birth born a little bit too soon i personally have a nephew that was born a little bit too soon and 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 it's weekly and 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 you decide maybe it won't survive the winter so you decide to go out to the nearest lake and drown it now you're a person who has the ability to make that drowning not happen should you simply stand by now of course what is also implied is that there are women who were never interested in having kids um maybe women who had g gotten into unfortunate circumstances let's say it like that and you uh you still convinced them to keep it for the sake of your own like because it sounded like there were women she knew were about to lose the child by natural means because of depression, which is a thing that can happen. And, um... I don't know, man. That's a hard question. Like, should you, should you make them keep it? Of course, this is the medieval era. There's no, like, natural... There's no, like, abortion clinics. You can't you can't pay for the clinic to, like... Uh, this teenager probably shouldn't have kids. Let's bring them back. No, no, no. This is probably a lot of them. Women she, she comforted, comforted were, like, 15, 16 years old. A lot of a lot of, of, of medieval families married away their 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 kids when they were old enough to bleed, so to speak. So it, it, it is very, very likely that some of the women she comforted and and and, 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 and made give birth had been thirteen, fourteen years old. When do women sort of hit puberty? Uh, some say 12, but I think that's, that's like all the hom hormones in, in the milk. 12 is, is normal now, but it certainly wasn't normal in the medieval era. Then it would have been 13, 14, 15, 16. Um, so, so, so they would have been wed away at like 12, 13 when they bled first time. The ritual... <laughs> Let's say like that the ritual of creating a family would occur. Um, so so this is this is mm, this is not good. Of course, not said outright. So then again, she says she could feel the child's presence ten years before. That is weird. I don't know if if is it really that destined in this universe. I know we have um. Rebirth and all that shit in the in this in this universe, but is it like? Is it is it really that determined? When a child will be born, that is amazing. Uh, at in this universe, at least, like I know that in 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 the real world, there's no determination like that. That's, that's just not how it works. <laughs> that's interesting. Um. Did we share that memory, or did you inflict it on you? Suddenly, there's a rasping cry across your consciousness. You raise those hands, you see the chance right from them, yet they have no sound that she moves. A greater good was done, and children were saved. It is a choice you may be forced to make one day. And when faced with it, you will make the same one. I'm certain I will. That is good, Watcher. Let's continue our journey for now. Okay, so, thank you for watching this long-ass episode of Anger Place. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we got a little sidetracked there at the end. I hope you join next time for more shenanigans. Until then, bye!